back a little bit because I'm just going to run out of gas. But, but when you get at least your third and fourth process on this, hour over three lakes and two canals starting out today on Lake Osceola named after a Seminole and Indian and that'll take us over to Lake Virginia these canals were originally dredged for trade transportation and the logging industry late 1800s the city was really starting to grow fast most of the yellow pine was taken down for lumber and a lot of it was floated through these canals to the sawmills. You can see a lot of um, Spanish moss in the city. I read where it's neither Spanish nor moss. <laughs> it's just a plant that grows on trees, doesn't harm the trees at all. And uh, back in the late 1800s, when the city was starting to be formed, uh, someone thought it would be uh, Good idea to stuff mattresses with it. That didn't work out so good. Bugs. Folks, watch out for this giant frog. He's Jeremiah. He's a friend. And we're now on Lake Virginia. A lot of different styles of architecture on the lakes today. We've got modern, contemporary, Spanish, Mediterranean, Greek Revival, even colonial. Also, a lot of the homeowners like to design their boathouse to match their house. And coming up on the left here is the Campus of Rollins College. Owens was the first liberal arts college in the state of Florida. Uh, it's still ranked in the top 20% of liberal arts schools in the country. Right here on the left is their competition swimming pool. Rollins and Winter Park are very good partners. They were founded right around the same time in the late 1800s and have always worked very well together. Rollins is an open campus, meaning the public can drive, bike, or walk through the campus. There's a beautiful walking trail right here on the left. A lot of banana trees in the canals up here. I'm coming out from the right. There's one. If you look up high, you can see a bush of bananas up there. No monkeys. Please watch your heads as we go into Squirrel Bridge again. Did I tell you they're nuts about it? <laughs> On the other side of the bridge, over, uh, over the bridge, you can see that the Bo Bougainvillea are blooming. Very pretty vine. And as we go under Osceola Avenue, we're going to have to watch it again. Please watch it up here, folks. Thank you. Back last summer, we were in drought conditions, and the canals were almost too shallow to pass through. But that was rectified. We found that to run a successful boat tour, water is important. On the left here is a live oak tree that tree experts say could be up to 400 years old. As we come out of the canal, if you look to the right, you can get a close-up view of the cypress knees. And something very, very rare in Winter Park. Trash. 
hardly ever seen it. Coming up on the right behind this double boat house is one of the oldest estates on the chain of lakes. It was built in 1897 by a Mr. Edwin Brewer from upstate New York as an escape from the harsh upstate New York winters. The story goes that to get his wife to relocate to this wilderness at the time, he had to build this as an exact duplicate of his home in Cortland, New York. It's an eight bedroom, seven bath, Greek revival with a grand ballroom. It worked, she came down. <laughs> Coming up on the right is a nice example of 1950s Bermuda-style architecture. James Campbell Rogers, a famous architect, designed this home for the owners so that they'd have a view of the lake from every room in the house. Those structures on top of the chimneys actually divert rainwater to a cistern that they use for irrigation. Several decades ago, the city of Winter Park voted to relocate all of the alligators out of the chain of lakes. Most of them were moved up to Lake Jessup up north of here. Over to the right, there's a cove that's still called Alligator Cove. Before that relocation program, up to 200 alligators at a time would congregate over there during mating season. A sight of an alligator in the, the lakes today is very, very rare. If one is spotted, somehow makes its way back here, they are relocated as fast as possible. The current trend is, probably like anywhere, is uh, for the new homeowner to uh, buy the, the house for the location with the permission of the city tear down the current structure and build the home of their dreams. This new construction on the right, once completed, will be the largest residence on the chain of lakes at 43,000 square feet. 43,000. That'll take us over to Lake Mainland. The Venetian Canal is long and winding and narrow, so please watch out for any low hanging foliage. Please keep your head and your hands in the boat. Please watch your heads on this side, folks. This is the Palmer Avenue Bridge, the only bridge you want to Ends of this canal staying the exact times we come through on every hour. Some people will leave the sun. Ooh, he's gonna hit. You got it? It's two more after me. Thank you.
You get there. Two more behind me, sir. Okay, let's sneak it over a little bit. Two more behind me, folks. No we'll be coming through again in another 10, 15 minutes. And now we're on Lake Maitland. Lake Maitland's the largest lake on the Five Lake Chain at 450 acres. On the right is probably one of the prettiest parks in the city of Winter Park. It's called the Craft Azalea Gardens. It's on Alabama Drive and it's about four acres of beautiful cypress trees, a lot of great walkways, a lot of lush plantings and flowers, a great uh, place for a walk or a picnic or just to sit and uh, meditate. A lot of park benches. They also hold a lot of small weddings and photo shoots right here at this monument structure. Once again, it's the Craft Azalea Gardens on Alabama Drive. If you look down the right corner of Lake Maitland here, uh, you can see the rooftop over the treetops of the old Alabama Hotel. The Alabama was built in 1921, and in its day it was really popular with socialites, celebrities, artists, and writers. Margaret Mitchell, who wrote Gone with the Wind, actually wrote the last few chapters of her book while she was staying there with the Alabama. Today, they have luxury condos. You're also going to see a lot of beautiful landscape architecture down the center of the lake. I call it Battle of the Backyards. glass house coming up on the right was just built in the last few years and what's unique about it is that it's boathouse is on land. We have a rail system with a winch that actually tows the boat up out of the water and into the boathouse. See if they made their bed today. I think they did. Yeah. Several years ago, there was an HBO special that was produced and directed by Tom Hanks. It was called Earth to the Moon. For six weeks of filming on the Space Coast that year, Hanks and his crew stayed at this house right here on the right. They actually filmed a portion of the movie inside the house and portrayed one of the astronauts' homes. The current owner, just a couple of years ago, bought a house next door and tore it down flat and built that nice matching pool house guest house. Because it could. Some of the most desired real estate in the city is right here on the right. It's called the Isle of Sicily. It's an 11 acre island with 12 estates on it, all of them beautiful homes. James Gamble Rogers, who I mentioned earlier, actually designed and built his own home on the island. Back in the 1950s, when they were making the island buildable, they had to add a lot of fill. While they were at it, they decided to shape the island similar to the actual island of Sicily off the coast of Italy. This building straight ahead is the boathouse for the Rollins College crew team. It's where they store all their crew shells and do their on-land training. We're going to re-enter the Venetian Canal and head back to Lake Osceola. Hopefully traffic free.
this big plant here on the right are called elephant ears. guys here about two years ago and I just started doing the boat tour last spring. Um, I moved here from Cape Cod. Escaped the harsh Cape Cod winters. Eight month long winters. And uh, so this is perfect for me. Thanks. I'm a job. One was Fred Rogers, star of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood on PBS. Fred came to Rollins as a music major freshman back in 1947. He came from Latrobe, Pennsylvania, where his dad was a wealthy steel magnet. Well, when Fred got here that fall, he found that the piano he had shipped down here from Pennsylvania didn't fit in his dorm. So he made a call to, uh, to his dad who bought him this house coming up on the right. This brick house with the green ivy covered walls was Fred's dorm for four years of Rollins. Fred's younger sister later followed him to Rollins and she stayed there too. He remained a good friend of Rollins and went to park the rest of his life. Uh, made many, many trips back here. Just. Uh, a little over a month ago, they uh, unveiled a statue in his honor on campus. It came out really nice if you get the chance to check it out. These homes on the corner here are on Interlochen Avenue, and directly across the street is the Winter Park Golf Course. Recently written up in Golf Magazine as being in the top 59 whole golf courses in the world. It's city owned, it's open to the public, and it's very reasonable. Just tough to get a tee down. And then the last historical point of interest is coming up ahead. It's called the Winter Park Scenic Boat Tour. Continuously running since 1938. That's 33 BD, before Disney. 364 days a year, weather permitting. 
want to thank you folks for coming on the tour this morning. Hope everybody had a good time. Hope you enjoyed the rest of your day in Winter Park. It's a beautiful city. It's a lot of great places for lunch up on Park Avenue. Have a great day.